here at the DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase. We're finally on day three. It's going to be the last day here, and it's been a great show so far. Yesterday, we flew this airplane here, and I want to tell you a little bit more about it. It is the uh, Nando Grappo Trail in, tra in tail dragger form. It is available in a tri-gear form as well, uh, but uh, tail dragger is what a lot of folks like, and indeed, it's what I enjoyed. So let's give a little description of the airplane for you. Uh, starting right up at the front, uh, inside the cowling, we've got a, nine, a Rotax 912, 100 horsepower, carbureted version, uh, swinging a GT prop. Uh, all metal airplane, including the wings, and by the way, these wings fold quite nicely and in fairly short order with a series of three pins, uh, two pins inside plus a aileron connect. Uh, but the wings are all metal, and the, so is the entire fuselage all the way back. Matco wheels and brakes on the aircraft, and that. Uh, a single door on the airplane, there's just one, it's, of course this is a tandem seating as you see here, and I'm going to latch the door up, there's a little latching mechanism you may be able to see back here, uh, right underneath the wing. That holds that up nice and securely for you while you enter the aircraft. Now, as you see, it's, uh, as I mentioned, two, seat, two tandem seats, and entry into the airplane is quite reasonable, it's quite simple in the front, it's a little more difficult in the back, however, that's going to get fixed because the door I'm going to go back here and show you. We'll come back to this bulkhead right here. So that door is going to be open quite a bit wider right in this area where my hand is. And that will ease that little bit of uh, hiccup of getting into the aircraft. And the new door will be a nice change. Now that's kind of the Mark II. This is the original model. This is the first one that won its special light sport aircraft certificate. Today, however, the company is uh, offering kits to people and uh, that may be the plan from now on and there's various ways that because they can do experimental light sport aircraft they can basically put it all together for you and you can work with them on a certain part of that not like experimental amateur built where you need to do 51 percent of the work so still some good opportunities for you there and you can save some money so a few things about the airplane it's uh Let's uh, just do some just basic specs here that I'm going to read off the chart to make sure I've got them right. Uh, 716 pound empty weight. That's pretty light. Uh, these aircraft are, uh, are built lightly on purpose and with a 1,320 pound gross weight allowed, of course, like every other special light sport aircraft. Uh, that gives you a good useful load. So on board the aircraft, uh, we talked about its empty weight and its gross weight. On board, you got 26 gallons of fuel. And so what that's going to translate to is two pretty good sized people inside the airplane without issue. And as you can see, the netting back there behind the aft seat, there's a space in the aft area there. You can't carry a lot of luggage back there, but then uh, you should be able to carry what you need for a reasonable regional flight. The airplane will cruise at about, a, about 100 miles an hour. Uh, 87 knots. That's a comfortable cruise. It will do better than that. We were, uh, did uh, full speed runs, full power runs, upwind and downwind like that. And at that point, we're seeing a little bit north of 100 knots, uh, so 115 miles an hour. But a regular cruise is going to be at uh, about 100 miles an hour. That'll be a quite an economical cruise speed. Um, the handling characteristics of the airplane also really suited. It's a very nice flying machine. And one way you can really tell that is by how it stalls and its response to stall. We did power on, power off stalls, and accelerated stalls. And in every case, the airplane just refuses to show any evil bones in it. Uh, did very, very nice recovery, even with stick full aft and waiting and holding, and the airplane just kind of cooperatively uh, refuses to stall so it feels real good that way so it's a nice airplane in many ways now talking about um, the interior components a little bit we do have uh, uh, tow wheel brakes on this because in a tail wheel you can spin the wheel spin the airplane around quite a bit with just the tail dragger of course but you need the extra impact of tow brakes to really pivot it around tightly and you can do that with a tail dragger better than you can do with any uh, nose wheel aircraft. So that's a nice fa factor on it. Okay, so let's take a quick review of the panel here. <coughs> Standing out prominently because of the color of these hooded uh, switches for the uh, uh, for the mags on the airplane, and that's fine. But there's also another set back here. Now, when, when an instructor is operating the airplane, uh, and you've got a student up front and the instructor in the back, there's full controls back there, but how could an instructor do anything about killing the engine if that was something necessary uh, maybe during startup or whatever, it starts to get away from the student. Well, right here where my hand is, uh, easily accessible from the rear, but also accessible from the front, is another set of these. So those have to be turned on first, 
and I'm sure Steve, uh, when he's going out to operate on his own, just leaves those on. But you could turn them off back here if you wanted. You have to turn them on first, and then you can activate these two. Uh, key switch uh, is how you actually get it started with a start button right above in between the two guarded switches. So that kind of covers that. On both sides of the cockpit here, let's see, the camera should be able to see this one over here right in front of my hand. That's a fuel cutoff switch, and there's one on this side as well. Of course, uh, it's very easy to, to, to observe uh, uh, fuel in the tanks that way as well. So, But that's a very, very clear option. So as you can see, there's a selection of uh, uh, analog gauges. It's a fairly small panel here. And one way to get the, the good new stuff is uh, Steve uh, Bensinger, who uh, represents this aircraft in the United States for Nando Grappo, the manufacturer in Italy, uh, uses the ab map. And this, as you can see, it fits in there quite nicely. And then he's used a little drop down panel, which is not where your knees need to operate anyway. It's right in front of the joystick. And the joystick is full forward now, so there's clearly no issue here with spacing. And that's where he's got his uh, uh, radio equipment and uh, you can have transponders and things like that in there as well. So it's a quite a complete little airplane. On my left hand over here is the uh, throttle, and of course the one in the rear is the same way, and they're linked together, so that works fine. When you've got the throttle full forward now, you're going to have the throttle handle, I'm not going to move it, uh, is up about this point. And at that time, with your hand on the throttle here, it's very easy to get to the flap switch, as you can see in this yellow uh, tipped switch right here, and right next to it is the flap indicator. Just above that is the trim indicator. The trim is on the joystick, and there's a trim select button up here this moves it from the front to the rear so if if uh, steve is doing instruction from the rear or somebody else is doing instruction from the rear um, then you would flip that to aft so that they could operate it from the rear but if you're just taking someone up and you don't want them messing with that and possibly upsetting your flight you can sort of isolate them out and now it's just forward so now the trim will not work in the back uh, that's kind of a safety feature on there, but it certainly wouldn't be a problem for a couple of pilots that were t changing back and forth and who controls the airplane. You just tell them to switch it. Now, there's no instruments in the rear, but Steve would just merely move to the side a little bit like I'm doing, or for the camera, I could do it the other way. And it's quite easy for the person in the aft seat then to look. I was able to see the airspeed and the altitude, no problem from the rear seat. And uh, what was on the ab map, of course, I can't operate the ab map from the rear seat, so you wouldn't fly it solo from the rear, of course, uh, because you lack some of these central controls. But, but it was easy to operate the airplane from the rear, no problem. And you have all the flight controls you need, although not all the switching and certainly the circuit breakers and like that. So we're finishing up here with the instrumentation. Now, the ab map is not the one that you might get in the airplane that you'd order here, uh, because uh, Steve Bensinger, the uh, importer of this aircraft, is working with MGL Avionics. Um, and they, uh, they have a whole range of instruments and all different sizes, so they can easily accommodate the panel that's in this airplane with some of those MGL equipment. And, they, and MGL also has a whole line of radios, and so that's a, a central source for uh, Steve to get all this uh, uh, panel equipment that you need. Okay, so let's talk about the airplane a little bit. This airplane grew out of something called the Dewey that was a single-seater with a jump seat, and this uh, particular model came along in approximately 2009, in first production shortly after that as the as the trail model now with a full proper two seats in it and there are over a hundred of these flying in Europe uh, they're still rather sparse here in the United States because it's uh, just taken its time to get in the marketplace but there's a good number of them flying overseas um, so the airplane is available as a basic tail dragger kit for in the neighborhood of $25,000 and folks if you're watching this uh, several years after this you'll need to check with Steve to find out uh, what the current pricing is but today it's a little over twenty five thousand dollars that's for a basic airframe kit and to that you'll have to add engine and paint and uh, avionics and some other accessories that you may choose there's quite a list of accessories you can pick to go with it uh, so obviously that'll bid it up somewhat but a experimental light sport aircraft which is a kit that can be built from any percentage that's allowed under the program where a special light sport aircraft has to be produced first this particular one has a special certificate uh, airworthiness certificate on it, so that means they can build ELSA kits. But those can be any percentage, and the owner doesn't have any particular responsibility to meet a certain percentage. So they can basically deliver to you a ready-to-fly experimental light sport aircraft, and that is also a very agreeably priced airplane at seventy-four thousand nine hundred dollars. Again, that's today. Check with Steve to find out what it might be after you've watched this and uh, shown some interest in the airplane. 
So more information you can get uh, from Steve Bensinger's operation, which is called Lone Palm Arrow. We'll put that on the screen for you there. And Steve is based here in Central Florida, so it's a nice place to come and uh, uh, assist with the building of your airplane and uh, then flying on home afterward. So more information from Steve at Lone Palm Arrow, and that's the name of his business as well as his web address. And you can find more about the Nando Grappo Trail and all kinds of light sport, light kit, and ultralight aircraft in the range of affordable aviation. All that's available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here at the first ever DeLand Sport Aviation Showcase. There's full power. Normally I'd be climbing out of 55 to 60. All right, so we got that number right now. Next right, Papa, what's your position now? There's 40, 35, 30. <laughs> Right there. 25, and there we finally got a little bit of break out of it, but even that was not much.